What's up guys, Chris here from ChrisTheFreelancer.com and in today's video, I'm counting down my top five destinations for digital nomads in 2018. Let's get into it. All right, so to celebrate the release of my new book, The Digital Nomads Guide to the World 2018, I'm doing a series of videos this week on where to go as a digital nomad. And today I'm gonna kick things off with my top five personal favorites. Now, in the book you'll find that I try to be as as objective as possible. So uh, I don't try and personalize and say, I liked this, I didn't like that. It's more like, here's how much things cost. Here's this workspaces and the features. Um, here's the things to top things to do. And I tried to keep my own personal preference out of it. And actually one of the videos in the series is gonna be about figuring out where's the best place for you personally as a digital nomad. But in this video, I just wanted to start with my top five digital nomad destinations. Uh, so if you're anything like me, you're gonna love these places and uh, give you a good starting point on ideas for where to travel to in 2018. So the first destination is of course, for people that know me, uh, Chiang Mai is still number one for me. And uh, I still get the question, why is Chiang Mai so popular? A lot of people don't get it. And you know, it's easy for me to understand, I guess, cause I've spent a total of nine months there. But for people on the outside, maybe you don't quite get the sense of just how great the lifestyle is there. Yes, it's not the most beautiful city in the world. Yes, there's no beach. It's not super exciting or anything, but for a remote work lifestyle, if you just wanna get stuck into work uh, and not worry about money, not worry about uh, finding good Wi-Fi and just have everything really convenient, um, everything really inexpensive, it is just, the best place I can think of really for the remote work lifestyle specifically. And just like I touched on, the cost of living is crazy cheap, but also great value for money. So you might have seen my video living under $600 where I went a whole month where I filmed everything I paid for, everything I bought in Chiang Mai, and I managed to do the whole month living under 600 US dollars. A lot of people call me a cheat because I stayed in a nicer apartment and split it with my girlfriend. But as I mentioned in the video, you can get apartments in Chiang Mai for as little as $80. Yes, it's not gonna be that nice, but I mean, you can get lots of, uh, you know, $300 is, is an all right amount for an apartment in Chiang Mai. You can stay in the nicest area of town and have a like a studio apartment. It, for $300, like there's not many places and, and these are like modern style apartments. Uh, you know, cost of food is ridiculously cheap, one to two dollars to go grab uh, and really nice freshly made Thai dish. Granted, you have to sit on plastic stools and it's not luxury, but it's cool and it's authentic and it's quick and easy, right? There's beautiful mountains you can go driving into, uh, you know, get, hiring even a scooter bike is super easy and affordable. Digital nomad community is huge there. Uh, I made a lot of good friends in Chiang Mai. Internet, of course, like speeds of more than 100 megabits per second if you are on super Wi-Fi from AIS, which is like, I think five or so bucks a month, like super cheap and super high quality. And that's kind of uh, Chiang Mai in a nutshell. It's like, it's got other features, like it's laid back culture, people are chill there. Um, but I think for remote work is the, the main factors for Chiang Mai that it make it a winner is the cost of living and the value for money that you get for that cost of living to live like a Western lifestyle and also the amount of workspaces and just really good internet. Um, so Chiang Mai is still number one for me. All right, number two on my personal favorites for digital nomad destinations is Bali, Indonesia. And actually I only spent one month in Bali at the very start of my digital nomad journey, but I was simply blown away um, by the scene there. And so basically you got these really cool co-working spaces like Hubert and Dojo. Um, as you might know, I'm really big into co-working. Uh, and these spaces basically they're really unique and interesting, but also they do a great job of being great digital nomad co-working spaces. They bring together the remote work community. They provide really good internet um, and they're in really good, cool areas. So Hubid is in Ubud, which is the uh, lush, green, mountainous part of Bali. And the space is basically made out of bamboo, uh, really unique space. You can sit out on a hammock and do some work. You can uh, look out into the rice paddies, um, really cool spot. 
and they have lots of different community events and different workshops and seminars. Uh, Dojo is a world away in Changu Beach, so it's like really close to the beach. Um, it's a renovated pool villa and you got this like pool in the middle of it. Really cool spot, but I'm not sure it'd be the best for productivity having a, a pool with like bikini girls like hanging out all the time um, and just surfers everywhere. But if that's your vibe, you're gonna love dojo and finding places like this are really important for, for digital nomads I feel in Bali because there is a reputation of Bali uh, having poor internet but these spaces do a really good job and they invest a lot in the infrastructure to deliver high-speed internet to cater for digital nomads so for me when choosing a digital nomad destination that's really important but also Bali as a whole is just a beautiful island. There's so much diversity there. You can go to Kintamani, uh, check out mountaintop views and uh, you know, go to beaches and beautiful temples. And just the culture in Bali and the existing tourism market in there is a great place uh, to have fun, let loose. But then also you've got those places to work out of and meet other digital nomads. Number three on my list of top digital nomad destinations, I'd have to go with Koh Lanta in Thailand. And the reason why is very simple. One co-working space there called Kohub. Now Kohub I went to in 2016 and I just thought this place is the best co-working space I've probably ever been to uh, for digital nomads. Why? Well, it's the only place you can really uh, the only real workspace on the island. So any digital nomads that come to Koh Lanta kind of have to congregate around this space. And so that brings the community together. Um, they've obviously got good internet and great workspaces to get stuff done, but they also have, uh, you know, events on the weekly. Um, you can ride into like national parks and go to beaches and hang out with your other uh, Kohab members. And, uh, I guess I wouldn't really go to Koh Lanta if it wasn't for Kohab, but being able to kind of go out there and it almost feel like a work retreat um, so you can still get your work done, you can go hang out at the beach, you can go hang out with other members. It's just, I love the environment there and I think Kohab have created a really good uh, remote work environment and community in Koh Lanta. Number four of my top spaces for digital nomads, uh, Las Palmas de Gran Canaria. Uh, Las Palmas is a city, uh, it's technically a part of Spain, but it's in uh, the Canary Islands, just off the north coast of Africa. So basically you got year round good weather and you're technically in Europe, um, but you're nowhere near Europe, if that makes sense. And what I love about Las Palmas is number one, it's convenient. You can get an apartment or an Airbnb right near the beach and go to the beach every day, walk to different restaurants, walk to the supermarket, walk to your co-working space if you want to do co-working. Number two, there are so many co-working spaces there. I went to co-working C because I wanted to work with the guys that put on Nomad City, but um, like there are so many that I discovered once I got there. I went to another one called Coco, but there's just like so many, so many different co-working spaces there. And it's really surprising. And like I said, the government is trying to push uh, digital nomads. They want people to come. So it's a lot different to what you think of when you go to like Thailand or something where the government doesn't talk about it at all. And you kind of feel maybe a little bit unwanted or that you're doing something wrong. Uh, in Grand Canaria, they actually uh, are encouraging it through events like Nomad City, which is really cool to see. Obviously, if you're a European uh, nomad, the e being in the EU is going to be a really cool feature for you because you can just go over there and have free movement, I believe. I think that's how it works for you EU guys. But finally, it's just the diversity of that island is incredible. I'm talking natural diversity. So you, you can be in the city in Las Palmas and then you're off uh, down the south to these uh, huge beaches in the south uh, where the weather's perfect. Then you can go into the mountains. Uh, there's just so much diversity in uh, Grand Canaria as an island. It's said to be a continent in one island. Uh, really cool. Only downside to Las Palmas is probably the most expensive out of the top five that I'm talking about. Uh, and it's the most expensive probably destination in my book. But you know, if you can afford it, if you're an EU nomad, uh, Las Palmas is a great place to head and, and, and live a remote work lifestyle. All right, now number five on my top digital nomad destinations. And it was actually the last one I checked out, which was Playa del Carmen, Mexico. Now, the reason I went to Playa del Carmen, it doesn't really have much of a, 
uh, brand or there's not much buzz around it, but I noticed there's a co-working space there called Nest and it seemed to cater for digital nomads and often this is how I do my research. I, I try to find co-working spaces that or services that cater to digital nomads because then that communicates to me that it is an up and coming area and that there is a community forming there. Um, but basically, I went to Playa del Carmen. I really wanted to check out Mexico and I thought this was a great entry point and I thought it was great. The co-working space was great. Uh, there's a small community there, so it is, it is on, on the up and coming, um, but you're so close to the beach. There's so many beautiful uh, natural diversity, just like Grand Canaria. Uh, they have things called cenotes that you can go swimming in. You can go check out Mayan ruins. Uh, it's really great place for tourism, but now with the co-working space, Nest, uh, and there's a few others as well if you want faster internet, uh, there's another one called Work In, I believe, if you want really fast internet. So you don't have to give up, you know, really fast internet to work here. And the other thing which is huge for me is food. And I haven't had local food this good since Thailand uh, and Mexican food in Mexico is just nothing else. It has ruined Mexican food for me now back here in Australia because we don't really have corn tortillas or anything like that. The food there is amazing. I still miss it. I need to go back to Mexico. All right, so there you have it, my top five digital nomad destinations. Just my personal preference, you know, these are the ones I've been to like over 30 places, I think, in the last two years. And these are the top five that stand out to me. But like I said, there's a lot of personal preference involved in these. And that's why in the next video, I'm gonna be talking directly to you guys and kind of giving you a flexible framework to kind of figure out what you like and then find the perfect destination for you. So I'll see you on that video. Uh, make sure to check out the book if you haven't already. Um, and I'll see you on the next video. Thanks.